Very many decisions are pending today in very many countries. America is going for their elections. Uganda is just about to do the same. Kenyans, on the other hand, are deciding to redo their constitution. Everyone is on the verge of making a decision after another. And I can tell you this, that every decision bites. Every decision is expensive. And every decision is changing the course or changing the direction in which countries and individuals are taking. And so we've been discussing in this podcast very many things to do with decision making and we've said that it is in the moment of our decision making that our destinies are shaped. Life Signatures Radio is about purpose, it's about productivity, it's about resilience and there is absolutely no way that you're going to have these things come in your life if you are not a decision maker and so in today's podcast we're going to continue discussing the important aspect of decision making. You want to listen to this. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. Every time a decision is made for something or against something, you can be sure of one thing, that a life is being affected and a destiny is being shaped right then and there. All around the earth, all around the world, decisions are what are making things to move, things to happen. The atomic bomb was made because of a decision. It was dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki because of a decision. The World War I came about as a result of a decision. Every kind of conflicts that we face in life, they are because of decisions. Either decisions are being made or they are not being made. Your life progressing from one level to the next next listen is not going to be an automatic or arbitrary kind of a thing it is going to be as a result of a decision that you make in your life whether you're facing rain or shine whether you're facing hell or high water decisions are what moves things you cannot decide to vacillate and to be an observer in your own life it's good to choose to make a decision and to be in control and we've been discussing these things in this episode in this mini-series where we say that the very first thing that you need to decide to do or the very first angle of decision making is making huge, big, large, audacious decisions. If you look in your life the past one year, if you haven't made any one of those decisions, chances are that your life is not happening. Chances are that you are maybe on autopilot and success does not come on autopilot technically. It does come on autopilot but it means that you have characterized yourself if you inculcated some things in you that it becomes automatic. However, that inculcating is because of intentional decision making that has been done into your life. And so from then on, you start moving because of that particular decision. If you do not decide, then there's nothing that is going to happen. So big, huge, audacious decisions are important to make. And then we said the second thing that you need to do is to make sure that you're not vacillating between decisions. Once you've had your facts in place, just little facts in place, move on. As in, decide right there and then decide promptly. Stop vacillating and stop stop postponing. Stop procrastinating. Stop over analysis, paralysis analysis, over emphasizing on you want this data, you want that data, you want this input, you want that output. Three months down the line, you've not made a decision and you you already know in your heart of hearts what you need to do. It's just that you're scared or you're afraid. So we said, decide promptly and move on from that. 
And then number three, we said, decide more often. Be a person who is always not scared of making a decision. If something is not happening, decide. There's this football team called Arsenal. And even as I'm speaking to you today, they have just recently fired their coach. And they saw results were happening. Okay. In fact, this is coming because their previous coach, Asin Wenger, kind of you know resigned or stepped down or he was let go of his work because he had been at the helm for 21 plus years making decisions every and he was very successful in what he was doing but then the past three or four years of his tenure he was experiencing a downtrend in performance and it was just becoming too familiar and he was not hitting the targets that he used to hit and people started clamoring for him to go a decision was made and then once that decision was made, 18 months down the line, there's this man who's coming in to replace him. And it's just, I mean, it's a mess. You see these guys playing, they're just messed up. As There's no definition, there's no identity, there's no passion, there's no direction, there's no motivation. Match after match. And I'm thinking, fire this guy, get rid of this pretender. That's what I used to call him, I'm sorry. But get rid of this guy. And they were just weren't doing it. And then there's a day that they were playing some second-rate team and they got clobbered at home. They decided to decide. <laughs> and they made a choice to suck him. See, we need to be ready. That's why I said in that episode that normally decisions have to be made more often because things normally change. Einstein told us that you cannot solve a problem with the same level of thinking that created that problem. The mindset has changed. I mean, the mindset has to change because things have changed. The environment has changed. Maybe goalposts have shifted and so on and so forth. So the, be a person who is available to make decisions often. And I'm not saying that you make arbitrary decisions because you just have to decide. No, I'm saying as and when an opportunity presents itself for you to decide, decide. See, you never are going to get a second opportunity the same in the same manner that this one is offering itself. The same conducive environment, the same chance. It's not going to come. The same tide that you're waiting for that is now here might not necessarily come the same way that it is right now. So if you have an opportunity to decide today and now in this season, do make that decision. Be a person who is open to be making decisions more often. And today we're going to continue with the same thing, talking about decision making. I don't know about you, but I can tell you this, that the quality of your life, the quality of your destiny, the quality of your productivity is directly proportional probably to the quality of the decisions that you are making or have made. Your shape in destiny is as a result of the decisions you took or you did not take. So be bold enough to be a person who is deciding in your life about the decisions that you need to make and deciding about the direction that you need to take. Without decision making, we say nothing happens, nothing moves, nothing changes without decision making. And guess what? Who is, guess who is deciding? It is you. You cannot let your mama decide for you unless you're below 18 years of age. You can let your, not let your wife decide for you unless, of course, you talk together and you analyze the situation together. You cannot let your child decide for you. You are the one who is in charge. You are the one who is in control of the situation. You are the one who takes the back. The back stops with you. It lands on you, not on someone else. So be a person who sits down and reflects and considers Consider, consider this and consider that and make a decision. There is a reference in the Bible about this Proverbs 31 woman. Every woman who is a Christian, for the most part, they will be encouraged that, oh, you need to be a Proverbs 31 woman and all those, and, you know, all those things. Let me tell you this. One of the hallmarks of that woman is decision making. It says she considers a field and she purchases it. As in, if you look at the CV that they've painted about that Proverbs 31 woman, she is always deciding, always making decisions, always making the right decisions. Let me tell you, a successful man or a woman, a successful accountant, a successful practitioner, a successful doctor, whatever 
person that you're talking about, whoever it is that is going to be successful, is going to be the person who is always making decisions. Always making decisions. Always making decisions. So, number one, decide big. Number two, decide promptly. Number three, decide more often. And today, number four, take counsel always to make decisions. Pause and think about that. See, we are not gods. Okay, with a small g, we are. But with a capital G, we are not. In other words, we do not know every single detail. We don't know everything. By the way, there are some people who are more experienced than we are. And there are even some people who are worse off than we are. And we need to look at life from both angles in order to make decisions. It says that in wise counsel, there is safety. Before you can go to war, before you can go to fight, before you can make a massive decision in your life, whom to marry, whom not to marry, what decision to do in your business, make sure that you take some kind of counsel. Don't be some proud person who is saying, me, I know everything. I don't need to hear from mom. I don't need to don't hear from dad. I don't need this and I don't need that. Every time you find you catch yourself shunning counsel, guess what? You are already failing in that decision. I remember there's a friend of mine who was in a verge of getting married. And all that this, this lady will be doing will be to want everyone to rubber stamp her decision on the kind of husband that she wants. Of course, she used to introduce him to people and so on and so forth. But every time someone will raise an issue, probably someone has seen an issue somewhere. Every time this person will raise an issue and say, hey, but you guy, I mean, look at this guy. Have you considered this and this? That person will be shunned by the lady. Over and over and over again, in fact, uh, some crucial people in her life were cut out of the decision-making process of this marriage thing that she wanted to go into. And you see, life normally tells you this, your wish is my command. Life is neutral. You want this, you get it. Okay, you go for it, you get it. But life never shields you from the repercussions and the consequences of the decision that you've done. And that's why it's always important to make sure that before you can make a big decision, you are doing what? You are making counsel. You are taking counsel. I want you to sit down and consider what decision are you making of late that is actually a huge major decision and this one goes by the way to all of us who are young and even the young at heart normally for those of us who are i mean if you've ever looked at your life there's this season of time if you're not careful there's this season of time that comes it's basically a rebellious phase we like we think our parents know nothing our elders know nothing they are outdated they are so archaic they have no clue how, about what we want and how, about how life is working and we are so rebellious against them we don't want to hear from them if you are not careful let me tell you something you can easily continue on with your life in that season where you do not want to listen to counsel you do not want to listen to an elder person or an experienced person or an informed person or a knowledgeable person who is telling you something about the decision that you want to make in fact it's not just about someone telling you that decision it's about you being open that is the thing being open to receiving feedback being open to receiving counsel something about counsel is that it's not going to be forced on you good counsel is when you are open to it and is actually being given you know with neutrality with you being loved with you being cared for you know having brutality brutal honesty coming together with it so this lady refused every time. I mean, she wanted everyone to cement her decision. Everyone to rubber stamp her decision. That is not counsel. When you come to me and your mind is already made up, I don't need to tell you anything. That's why you can sometimes... Have you ever gone to someone to seek counsel and they say nothing? Because they have realized that your mind is made up. And even if they tell you, you might not even hear. You might not, not even want to listen. Very many people have been told, don't marry that one. And it's, by the way, sometimes it's a genuine, it's a genuine reason. They have been told, don't go there. And it's a genuine reason. And they didn't listen. And every time we never listen to counsel, we normally pay back big time. 
And that's exactly what happened to this lady. This lady started being clobbered after the after she got married, started being clobbered. I mean, crazy things happening, and maybe they are not even together, and so on and so forth. But you see, the signs were there, the red flags were there. That is the power of counsel. Because when you are in the situation of creating a decision or making a decision, sometimes you are blinded, sometimes you're so emotionally invested to be objective. And I'm going ahead of myself. Sometimes you're so emotionally invested in it to see the obvious things i mean you love her eyes when she opens her eyes and she's ogling you are so my friend i mean you are weak your knees become so weak you cannot even see that she's cheating about her age you cannot even see that she's lying she's taking you for granted you cannot see things because you're emotionally invested in them that's why you need some outside help some outside counsel you see to help you in that and i'm not necessarily talking about marriage and dating and weddings and so on i'm talking about everything to do with life sometimes when we want to make a decision our heart the, the moment you you're making these huge decisions your heart is pounding like crazy and it's so easy to make a wrong decision because you are not emotionally leveled you are so emotionally invested in it and you don't see things clearly so i'm saying that number four if you are going to be a good decision maker learn to always and i'm not saying that you should always depend on on decision making to such an extent that you are a zombie you don't think for yourself you don't you know you have any kind of input you're waiting for people to talk to you're always asking questions i mean always asking for people to decide for you i have i have friends sometimes who get so pissed off with me why because every time they come to me for help to make a decision on something i normally throw it back to them i throw it back to them because i do not want them to have me as a crutch to depend depend on me in that decision making they have to strengthen their decision making muscle but you see it's good for them to have me as a sounding board and it's good for me uh, coming from the coaching angle it's good for me not to make a decision for them not to tell them this is good this is bad it is good for me to use questions as a counselor to use questions and to have them look at themselves in a mirror to see their own reflection and to see am i being too selfish here am i being too judgmental here am i in a hurry here am i just scared and then they can have a peace of mind to make an objective decision but then in some few instances where loved ones are involved you can actually weigh in and you can say this is how i feel this is how i feel about this this is how i feel you should approach this give it some time and so on and so forth so make sure that even as you're making these decisions you are having counsel counsel is important it is critical it is safe but i'm not saying that you make it like you're depending on it i mean every working day you have someone to make a decision for you you know the one who is pulling the strings for you no you've got to be in control you have the, to be the one who pulls the trigger yes but you have a sounding board that's why i think we have boards of directors boards of governors you know and such like stuff because counsel brings safety to you it is a wise thing to consult to consider to get wisdom from one angle and wisdom from another angle before finally making a decision see the beauty of our world today is that there is no shortage and it cuts both ways by the way there is no shortage of where you can get wise wholesome counsel from but then also there is no shortage of where you can get lousy selfish counsel from but if you're genuine at heart if you're a genuine seeker there are very many places where you can be able to obtain counsel from but the key thing about this is that you need to get counsel from someone who is trustworthy someone who is proven someone who is knowledgeable someone who actually wants the best for you cares about you loves you if you are in a relationship where there is trust you can easily get counsel from there before during and even after you have made decisions make sure that these things are going on in your life know this however that you cannot blame the counselor for the outcome of the decision neither can the counselor want to take credit <laughs> 
whenever the decision goes right because basically if anyway the point is this that you are getting a sounding board not a decision from someone that you are counseling with and i'm not talking about counseling from that angle of oh you have issues in your life and someone is counseling you i'm talking about counsel okay counsel like someone in a better position to advise all right to hold your hand and to mm, open your eyes and try to explore some details about the decision that you want to make someone who is experienced probably and so you make a decision by looking at their input so it is important that you know someone who is trustworthy in your life but they cannot be blamed for the decision that you made i remember of a story of someone who went to sue a company because they were having an option of either going abroad to further their studies or to get employed and they did not seek counsel Whichever way, by the way, life can give you, you, you just never know. Na- life is not going to give you 100% outcome. So what happened is that they took this job instead of going for further studies. And then one, maybe even less than six months down the line, they had lost the job and they also lost the opportunity to go and study. And guess what? They want to sue the company for losing the job. See, someone needs to counsel them that this is basically life is suing the company because you lost your job the company did not have anything to do with you losing the job because the company's also lost a contract so you cannot sue the company because they did not guarantee you a job a full-time job and so on and so forth so counsel is needed if you do not get this counsel chances are that you'll go and by the way i know this because it happened and I, I'm, I'm privy to this situation. So they went through circles upon circles of emotions. They engaged the lawyers and so on. And they went to the courts and so on and so forth. They lost money through the process and so on and so forth. They refused to listen to godly counsel. That let go and let go. This is a lost case. And they started blaming people all over the place. You cannot blame someone who has advised you for the counsel that you took or for the decision that you made sorry for the decision that you made once you've made the decision you are the one who is in charge of the decision not the person who gave you counsel because they are not god just like you are not god if you are god or if they were god then it would have worked you understand what i'm saying you take the full responsibility of the outcome of the decision that you made and we know something called cost correction if you made a decision even after you've gotten counsel and it did not work guess what you've become wiser because you now know what doesn't work and now you can even be in a position to advise someone else that being said you need a host of counselors to help you in critical not just in critical situations but also constantly in your life have this habit of having a sounding board and you always ask i love people who always ask and sometimes they don't like me because i don't normally give them straight answers and that's something that is strong for you because don't expect straight answers at all times expect counsel but don't expect solutions at all times learn to make your own decisions but also learn to get the input of someone else in the situation that is how you're going to improve your life quality decision making processes i hope this does some justice to you and i hope you are considering these things even as we are coming to a close of this mini series on choices and on decision making until tomorrow bye bye thank you for listening to life signatures radio if you enjoyed today's show subscribe to life signatures radio on itunes stitcher or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com life signatures radio fresh clean and inspiring